RF mixers are a fundamental building block of network analyzers, and understanding how they impact your measurements is critical if you want to fully understand your RF measurements. We'll draw our wave winners in a moment, but first we're going to jump into today's test gear tip. Whenever you read about improving measurement accuracy and dynamic range, you'll see a lot about IF bandwidth. But what exactly is IF bandwidth, and how does it affect your measurements? The textbook definition of IF bandwidth is the span of the center frequency of the intermediate frequency filter. Okay, so what does that actually mean? Hi, I'm Matt, and to understand IF bandwidth, first we have to talk about mixers. When you put two signals at different frequencies, F1 and F2, into a mixer, the output will be two more signals, one at a frequency of F1 plus F2, and another at a frequency of F1 minus F2. Here's where it gets interesting. You can use a local oscillator as one of your mixer inputs to tune input frequencies to your desired output frequency. This output frequency is called the intermediate frequency, or IF. Those of you with a radio background are probably saying, this is just your standard super heterodyne receiver. And you're right! Network analyzer receivers operate in a very similar way to radio receivers. Modern network analyzers have very wide frequency ranges like 100k Hz all the way up to 53 GHz on our new mid-range network analyzers. It's impossible for the instrument to actually analyze all of those frequencies at once, so the receivers convert the input, piece by piece, into the instrument's intermediate frequency using the mixer. So on the block diagram, we have a bandpass filter at the output of the mixer. This is our intermediate frequency, or IF filter. When you change the IF bandwidth of your instrument, you're changing the bandwidth of this filter. A wider IF bandwidth means bigger portions of your measurement sweep can be converted to the intermediate frequency, meaning your measurement is faster. But there is a trade-off in accuracy. A narrow IF bandwidth means only small parts of your measurement are converted to the intermediate frequency. Analyzing smaller portions of the signal reduces noise and improves your dynamic range at the cost of measurement speed. Let's look at a visual example. When it comes to image processing, IF bandwidth is analogous to pixel size. If the text is a signal, you can think of each pixel as a piece of the signal that has been converted to the intermediate frequency and displayed on the page. In this case, the pixels are very large. This is like having a wide IF bandwidth. The image is quickly processed on a computer, but may lack some of the detail we need for deeper analysis. This looks like our classic hello world message, but let's decrease the pixel size and take a closer look. At a higher resolution, we can see we actually have a typo in this message that we couldn't see with the large pixels. When you decrease the IF bandwidth, you increase the resolution of your measurement. Your application will determine what degree of accuracy you need. In summary, IF bandwidth determines the resolution level of your measurement. A wide IF bandwidth gives you faster, low resolution measurements. A narrow IF bandwidth gives you slower, high resolution measurements. Thanks for watching, and to learn more about network analyzers, check out the app note linked below. And there's a whole collection of VNA app notes, white papers, and ebooks in the Wave Resource Library. Go check those out at wavekeysite.com, along with a bunch of other resource libraries where you can get some of our favorites. Matt even wrote some of those himself. If you want a bonus test gear tip today, go check out a couple of the other videos on this channel. Cards should appear up there, and they'll also be linked in our comment below and in the video description. There's a video on how differential probes work and when you need to use one. If you want to like really geek out, you can check out the Datasheet series. We tried this out where Mike Hoffman and I deep dive into oscilloscope specs, or the video where we got to build out the side project of one of our R&D engineers, a really neat build he dubbed the Annoying Caps Lock Buzzer. In fact, Here's a quick clip of that one. Does this ever happen to you? 
Accidentally typing in all caps has been a problem since the dawn of the caps lock button, from getting locked out of your PC to relationship miscues. Got her a puppy. Hope she likes it. Oh, I love you. And even office mishaps. The team's gonna love this new break room. Did you get the email? I just got the email too. I heard there's gonna be layoffs. We all have problems with the caps lock button. It's only human, but it's time for something to change. We then go on to talk through the design and build this one, so go check out that video if you want to make one for yourself. I actually still use mine all the time. There's the caps lock button. Just doesn't get old, my cubates love it. And now it's time for today's winners. Like every day during Wave, five folks will win a handheld DMM and five folks will win one of these four channel oscilloscopes. And for the last time as part of Wave 2020, one person will win their choice of one of these sweet pieces of test gear. Tomorrow we're also giving away five DMMs and five scopes and we'll draw our final winner live of the last tier one prize, which is one of the biggest Wave prizes we have ever given away. They get their choice from a whole bunch of test gear options, so make sure to get your entry before it's too late at wavekeysite.com. Okay, today's DMM winners are Bargov Bose, Ed Cunningham, Stephen Baines, Amit Srivastava, and Jesse Robeck. Congratulations to those winners. The winners of the DSOX 1204G are Mark Schwenning, he's a Schwenner now, Chris Verdesil, Thomas Steinmetz, Toshiyuki Urakami, and Robert Sanchez. And our tier two prize winner is Bowie Neuenschwander. Congratulations to our winners. We'll be in touch with you all shortly. And that's it for today. Thank you for tuning in and joining us for Wave. I've had an absolute blast and I hope you have too. Let us know in the comments what new videos you'd like to see down the road and make sure you subscribe so you find out if we use your ideas. I'm Daniel Bogdanoff, thanks for watching and I hope to see you back right here live tomorrow for the Wave finale. That's not very nice, man. Don't make fun of last people's names. Or Mark Schwenning, he's a Schwenner now.